Okay, let's go. Okay, good, everybody's here. Part number two, this week is working much more smoothly, looking good. Okay, everyone, so we're gonna go into room number one. So follow me into room number one. So I'll go into room number one. Come on. We're all going into room number one. Okay, I'm gonna go into room number one too. Okay, here we go. Okay, everybody. We're gonna talk a little bit about part number two this week. And I want you to watch the video as soon as you can. Okay, so everybody come on over here. talk about part number two today, it's just the main points basically. Okay, I hope that before class next week you can watch the online video for part number three. We need to move a little bit faster, we've been going slow. So try to watch the video before the class. So like today I'm going to just cover the main points and then you have to watch the video on your own but I hope you can watch the video before the class. That would make it a little bit easier in case you have questions or something like that. Okay, the first thing we're gonna talk about today is uh, this section here, the vocabulary. Now, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this because I spend a lot of time on it in the video. So, this vocabulary is vocabulary related to preparing your goals. You need to make a goal. So today, my main point to everyone is, it's super important before you begin your negotiation to have a goal. That's really probably the most important thing you can do is to have a goal. So if I ask you a question, if I ask you, what's the most important thing you can do before a negotiation? Can anybody tell me what's the right answer? What's the most important thing you can do before a negotiation begins? Yes, make a goal, <laughs> right? This is not a trick question. This is an easy question, right? This is hard for people to do. Everybody can understand it. It's easy to understand, but it's hard to do. Why? Because we're all kind of lazy, and we don't want to work too much on things beforehand and we think well if we think too much it's not going to help and anyway i'm just going to try to get a lower price is better and that's all but actually it's not that simple and the people who can win a negotiation usually have a good plan beforehand they have a very clear goal beforehand from their goal they can make a plan we're going to talk about plans a little bit later so Let's go ahead and move into this area here. Follow me. I'm going to move over here. Everybody follow me over here. Here's Patrick over here. Okay, remember you can move your head 
if you hold down the control button, right? Hold down the control button on your keyboard, hold down the control button, and then move your mouse. If you hold down the control button and move your mouse, you can move your head up or you can move your head down and so you can look up at the slides, right? Okay, so in part number two, what we're talking about are these vocabulary words here and I want you to remember these vocabulary words and then this week's homework is you're going to make another video. So you need to make a video and in the video you have a simulated negotiation and you have to use all of these words up here. All those words up there, you have to use those. Okay, so that's going to be your homework this week. Use all these vocabulary words and make a video in a simulated negotiation that you make up. All right. Okay, that sounds great. Okay, we're going to move into the next part here, so follow me. Come on, everybody. We're going to go over to the introduction section. Yep, come on in. There we go. Okay. We're still waiting for some people to come on over. Not everybody followed us. They're slow. So you don't have to make up everything on your own. You don't have to do it from scratch, right? You don't have to bake the cake from scratch, as we say. You can have some help. And so I really like you to use some of these sentences, some of these phrases to do your uh, videos, which you're then going to post. Okay, so before we move on to the next section where I want to go over the main, kind of the main point of this chapter, before I do that, I want to see are there any questions. So is there any question about your homework, making a video? Did everybody make a video for this week? Excellent. That's group video. You don't have to do it by yourself. You do it in a group, so that makes it a little bit easier, but you still got to get together. You got to make a plan. You got to kind of execute. So in our book, we have all of these examples that you can use. So feel free to use them. And there's no such thing as copying in this class. Copying is good, so you can learn it. Okay, so if that's everybody's okay, then we're going to move on to the next room, which is the follow up. So, everybody, follow me. I'm going to walk backwards here. Follow me to the follow up room. Okay, come on, everybody. We'll go to the follow up room. Good. All right, we're all getting in the follow-up room here. Very good. And this is going to be the main point for the chapter. I guess I'll stand in the middle. How about that? Stand over here. Okay, so everybody follow over here, and I'm going to cover the main point of the chapter. Okay, 
Okay, still some people missing. We'll wait a couple seconds here for some more people to come in. Okay, almost everybody in now. Okay, I'm going to fly up a little bit here so I can get up near the picture here. Okay, in this part of the book, what I want to talk about is remember setting your goal. So if we talk about setting a goal, how do we do that? It's not an easy thing to do, I don't think. So we have to use a kind of system. And I like this chapter, very easy to introduce the system. So let's look over here at this example. So here we have a student, probably like you or, or like many people, wants to buy a cell phone. And so he's going to go buy a cell phone. He's going to negotiate. He's going to think about the different features, the different prices. He's going to think about uh, how much should he pay depending on how much money he makes, right? I mean, if we had unlimited money, if you had all the money in the world, or your mother and father give you all the money you want, you can just buy anything. It doesn't matter. If you had more than enough money, you could buy one phone today and buy another phone tomorrow and nothing matters right but we don't have that situation our resources are limited so in this case resources are limited so this students thinking hmm so what am I gonna do so I like this picture here that's right behind me this is the uh, kind of process right we first we think of individual goals that is what are the specific goals we have in mind one by one and here the example was uh, listen to mp3 music so he wants to be able to listen to music and then he can look at each goal and say how important is this goal how important is it to listen to mp3 music he also has a goal of the price should not be more than 50% of his monthly pay I think he has a part-time job so if he has a part-time job, he's basing his price based on his job income. That's pretty smart, actually. That's a good idea. So he's thinking, this phone must play MP3 and it must have a price that is less than 50% of my monthly pay. Now he's got two goals, but now he needs to think about which goal is most important. So that's the next part of the pyramid here, the upside down triangle here. And that's each goal's priority. Each goal's priority. How important is each one compared to the other? So in this case, he put price as most important. And the price should be less than 50%. But he also specifies the price that it should be 30% less then his monthly job would be better. Of course, zero would be best, wouldn't it? If you can have a zero price, well, that would be wonderful. But <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen, right? You're not going to get a zero price. So I think right here is a good example, right? What are the things you, you need or what are the things you want? We can call it need, we can call it want, but in economics, it's just called demand. And then you think about how do I organize these? Which one's number one important? Which one is number two important? So let me ask you quickly, what do you think is important in your phone you bought? I mean, you must have bought a phone recently. Maybe you bought a phone just very recently, maybe this month or this semester or maybe the last year. When you bought your phone, what was the important features of the phone for you? Let me come around and ask you, how about uh, Lisa? Lisa, can you tell me what was important when you bought your phone? It's 
V is working. Okay, Lisa, can you tell me what was important? What was an important feature when you bought your phone? Okay, can you be more specific? What does convenience mean? So you mean you need it to be tiny, to be small? Okay, and that was important for you so you can carry it. Where do you, where do you keep it? In your pocket? Do you keep the phone in your pocket? Why, where do you keep it that it has to be so small? Oh, okay, so you, need, so you needed the phone to fit in your pocket. Okay, so that's a good example. Lisa has a good example. She wanted it to be convenient, but then we have to think, what does convenient mean? And she says it means easy to carry around. And I say, well, how easy? And she says it can fit in my pocket. And I guess my next question would be, well, how big is your pocket, right? And so in this example, we've become more and more clear, more and more specific about what it is we want or what it is we need. Okay, very good. Okay, how about James? James, did you buy a phone recently? Hello, James. James. No answer from James. Okay. How about Adrian? Adrian, can you hear me? Buy a phone recently? Okay. When you bought your phone, what was important to you? So, was touch screen most important to you? Oh, you wanted it to be able to go online. Okay. All right, thank you. Your microphone's a little bit loud. You can turn it down about 30% maybe. Yeah, thank you. Okay, good. So, in Adrian's case, he wanted to have a touch screen and he wanted to be able to use the internet with it. So, all right, that makes some sense. Okay, let me find another one more person over here. How about Nate? Hello, Nate. Did you buy a phone recently? Okay, that's very not long ago. So what was the most important thing you were looking for? Okay, so you were looking at the screen size, right? And did you have a, a goal like what six inches or eight inches or what was the what was the screen size you like? Okay, so that's a pretty big screen. Okay, so in this example, we can see that Nate knew that he wanted a screen size. And then we ask, what size do you want? So these are all good examples. So the idea is first you think, what do you want or what's important in your negotiation? And, but then you need to be more and more specific exactly what do you want okay convenient yes but what do you mean convenient oh I mean size okay what do you mean size I mean small so you see some people want it small to fit in their pocket some people want a screen to be big some people want to use it on the internet so these are all different parts of the goal and here in our example you can see the triangle here let me fly up here again and you can see that we begin by adding these all together and we become more and more specific until at the very end, at the top, you have what's called the goal package. What's the goal package mean? 
The gold package means everything that I have to have in this deal. So in this example, most important was price. Less than 50% of my pay for one month. Two, MP3 playing ability, capability. And three, 50% is what I wanted, but 30% is actually my target. So 30 to 50%. Now, why doesn't he just say zero would be good? Well, like I said, zero is not possible. And also, why do we say 30% is goal number three, but goal number one is 50%? Because what he's saying is, I have to get that one thing. That number one is the most important to me. If I could save more money, that's good. How do you know how much money is, is how good? Because he specifically said 30% is my target. Okay, so the idea in this chapter is we need to make a goal package. How do we get to a goal package? Step by step, piece by piece. Look at what you think is important. Now, if you're working for a company, you cannot think for yourself usually. Your boss will tell you, we must have something. We need to have something. And if you're a good negotiator, then you're going to be able to understand which ones are most important which ones are second important, which ones are third important. Okay, this leads me to another idea I want to show you over on this other slide. So everybody follow me over here to the other slide. Come on over here. All over here now. Somebody's microphone's over. Somebody needs to turn off their, mute their microphone. We can hear everything that's happening. So at the center is the goal package, and then all these other circles are directly linked to them. We kind of already talked about them. Is it important to you, the price? Is the size of your phone important? Maybe a big screen or a convenient can fit in your pocket, right? Maybe the after-sale support is important, or maybe the shipping is important. Lots of times, all of these things are important for business, not just one of them. But the extra idea I wanted to show you in this picture is on the outside, that circle on the outside. You see the circle on the outside? It says things like relationship, reputation, getting a deal, future negotiations, and competition. So. What are these circles? What are these ideas on the outside? And what I'm trying to say is the circles on the inside are, I wouldn't say very clear, but much more clear. Okay. If I asked you, what do you want in your phone? And you said, I want a big screen. Then what could I say? I could say, well, how big? And you could say 5.5 inches. And that, that's very, very clear, I think. But on the outside, these ideas are less clear. These ideas are things like feelings or possible future opportunities like relationship or your company's reputation. What do people think of your company? So these things are hard to measure. They're not very clear, but they could be very important in your negotiation. So do you want to have a good relationship in the future? Do you want your company to have a good reputation? Do you want to get a deal just because you get a deal? Getting a deal sometimes is important even if you don't get exactly what you want. Sometimes it's better to get a deal rather than no deal. On the other hand, sometimes it's better to get no deal rather than a bad deal. It depends on your company's situation. So today's main point is this. You need to have a goal. How do you make a goal? Think of what's important to you. I'm going to fly down now, down to the floor. Think about what's important to you. And then think about the specifics. Become more and more specific. Exactly what does that mean? How small is small? How much is the price you want exactly? Then you need to think which ones are number one and which ones are number two, which ones are number three, what's more important than others. OK, 
Okay, and then when you're done that, you have kind of what we call the goal package, right? The goal package. All right, and then the next idea is after the goal package, you still need to do more, and that is you need to think about things that are not easy to measure, like relationship. In marketing, we often talk about relationship marketing. In negotiation, it's very similar. Okay, so that's the main points for today, your goal. So again, you have homework. Your homework is to do the videos, and in fact, we're probably going to begin to do more than one video soon. Um, we'll have to think about that. And I think um, Janice will email you soon about the homework assignment. But again, you're going to make a video. So you can begin making your video for part two as soon as possible. I want you to get online and watch my videos for part two and part three. Please watch ahead of time so that next week when you come to class, we've already read the book and looked at the video, my lecture. Yes. My, you mean the homework? Mm -hmm. Good. So far, uh, for sure, you have to do chapter one and two. And I think you said you already did one, right? Okay, perfect. That's perfect, that's great. That's perfect. So for sure, I want everyone to be done one. That's without a doubt. That was supposed to be done. And then I want everyone to do two for sure. But I'm going to talk with Janice and we're going to see, do we need to do also three before next week? So I think we're a little bit behind schedule. I'm beginning to get worried. So probably by next week, it's going to be two and three that you make. Now, when you watch my videos, you can watch all the way up to unit four, I think, and this week I'm going to record the rest of the units. So you can watch my videos anytime, but I would like you to get a little bit ahead of our class. So please watch my video for chapters three as soon as possible. And if you have some time, watch four, get ahead of schedule. And that way we can move a little bit faster because I want to begin our RPG soon. Okay, so I'm going to email you. Janice will email you very soon with the specifics to answer your exact question. Which ones do you need to record? And you can always record your homework early. We're going to do every chapter. So you don't need to worry. I'm not going to change the homework. Every chapter will have one video by you, by your group. And you can do it ahead of schedule. That's great. No problem. Okay, so is there any questions about the homework? Or is there any questions about today's chapter? I think we can see that many people have trouble getting into Wonderland because Java had an update. That update has affected us. So please don't update your Java. And if you do, you need to remove it and install an older one that I put on my server. And the people at Wonderland are working on solving this problem. It's not Wonderland's fault, it's Java's fault. But that's okay, and it looks like we have over 20 people here today, and it was very smooth. I didn't get any slowdown at all. We made the changes to the big building, we made some other program changes, nice and smooth. And you, your audio is very clear, everyone's audio is very good, so I'm very happy with that. Okay, so if I was to ask you, what's the most important thing you can do before a negotiation? What would you say?